Hello everyone, I have developed this um, SR model simulation for us to understand how disease is spread and then how different factors affect the spread of disease. Um, there's been a lot of uh, simulations in this, I mean, regard, I mean, recently, I mean, we have them in different programming languages. So I think I've done this for uh, those of us in the, in the MATLAB community, so that we so can have an understanding of how this is uh, spread. So this is a simple uh, SIR model, which is um, highly idealized. So the S stands for susceptible, the I is for infectious, and the R is for removed. And then um, you understand why we use the term removed, I mean, later on. So it has about seven arguments. The first one, MP, is the population of the community that we're trying, the, within which we're trying to study the spread of the disease. So as a default number of 100, I used 100 so that it is easy for us to read the percentage of the community that's been affected. NI is the number of index keys of infections. That's like the initial number of individuals. They were infected, so I said that to so the default of one. DS is the minimum safe distance that you can be from an infected person without being infected. So this is a measure of how contagious a disease is. So if it is small, it is less contagious than when the minimum safe distance is large. Then you have the probability of being infected, and this. I mean, it comes into effect when you're closer than the minimum safe distance to when a person that is infected. So, and it is actually a measure of how careful people are, whether you wash your hands regularly, whether you touch or not, or your mucous membrane too regularly. Then you have TR, which is the time it takes for you to be removed from the model. So, this uh, has three um, equivalent cases. Either the person died or the person recover, and so then is immune to that disease or the person is quarantined by the government. So these three cases are equivalent. So it's the reason why we use the name, why we use the, why we use the term removed instead of recover. So you can, you can either recover, you can die, or you can be quarantined. So then we have um, F, which is the relative repulsive strength. I mean, can, so if people are there to social distancing, that corresponds to uh, a larger value of f. Uh, so it's one of value of f means people are not adhering to social distancing. So if you set f to zero, I mean like there's no social distancing. So you can increase the value of f to, I mean, increase the measure of social distancing that is taken into account during the simulation. So we're ready to perform this simulation and then let's look at different cases and then see how um, the change of any of these parameters that we've talked about affect the spread of the disease. So first, we can just copy out, I mean, the default values so that's what we have here. Um, then we're on the simulation. I okay, forgot about the video. So here we're setting the uh, Population of the community to be 100. Initia in this case is 1. The uh, minimum safe distance is 0 0.05. The probability of you getting infected if you are within that distance to an infected person is 0 0.2. Uh, then the time it takes for you to remove, to be removed from the, from the model is 1. And then we have the measure of uh, social distance is 1. And then it's important to note that the infected individual shown with color red, I mean, the infectious guys are uh, color red, the susceptible people are uh, green, Why those who have been removed from the model, I mean, are coded with blue color. So let us run this simulation for this, uh, for this different values. And then we now make adjustments, I mean, to those values and then see their impacts. Uh, 
um, as you can see here, about 50% of the population was infected at the peak. I mean, when they talk about flattening the curve, we're talking about this red curve. So at, at the peak, I mean, of the, of the uh, pandemic, I mean, oh, well, sorry, it's, I mean, the epidemic, uh, it's uh, about 50% of the population, I mean, was infected. So, given that we actually generate in the population randomly the uh, velocity, the initial location, we can rerun, I mean, this case, just to see if there's going to be difference in the results. Um, as you can see, this time around, just about I mean, something I mean, slightly greater than 40%. And then um, just like the previous result, we found that about 10% of the population were not infected at all, I mean, during the, the pandemic. So now, the, there's a lot of talk about, I mean, social distancing, about washing our hands, about, I mean, the government responsiveness. So we're going to play with this uh, uh, four parameters. The, the, the DS, let's assume that it's really contagious, and then the, we, we increase the, the distance, or it is less contagious, then we reduce the distance, and then see the impact. So let us see our DS, instead of 0 0.05, we said that to be 0 0.02, that it is less contagious, and then let us see what the, the effect will be. So just like we reduce that by a factor of two, and then let us see what will be the result. As you can see, the impact is very dramatic. That is, just by a factor of two in the measure of how contagious the disease is, you find out that about 90% of the population remain uninfected. Let us repeat this calculation, just to be sure. It is even way better in this situation, in this case. It's even way better. Like more than 90%, just by going from 0 0.05 down to 0 0.02. Uh, uh, let us make DS 0 0.04, just 20% reduction in the, in the measure of contagiousness. So let's see. So by reducing by 20%, the, it doubles the number of the individual and the community that were not infected, and then reduces the, the percentage of the maximum number of infection at any particular time to so about 30% from around 50%. So this actually helps flatten the curve. But of course, we don't have control over that because that's actually an intrinsic, uh, this is intrinsic to the nature of the disease. So let us move to some other things that we can actually control. So the first thing is, let me set the, the, the S back to 0 0.05. And then let us see, people are really, I mean, careless that, I mean, instead of uh, probability of infection to be 0 0.2, let's say it increased to 0 0.4 because people were shaking hands, people were, I mean, not washing their hands and then touching their mucous membrane. So we said PR infection to be, uh, let's say, 0 0.5 this time around. You have 50% chance of being infected. And then let's see how this traumatic, how this affects the, uh, the spread of the disease. Here we see that 
by increasing the probability of infection, the number of the maximum number of cases go way up to about seventy percent, and only one individual representing one percent of that community remain uninfected throughout the time throughout this period. We can repeat this calculation just to be sure. Similar results, and here it is even more drastic, and everybody got infected. <laughs> Okay, so let us return the probability of infection back to 0 0.2. Let me see if you get an effect. Back to 0 0.2. Then we'll look at the responsiveness of the government or uh, the case where the, 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 um, the, the disease is really deadly that you get infected and then um, instead of you being removed within a day, you... I mean, you die within half of a day. I mean, it's 0 0.5. Or the government is really very responsive that they know that you get the infection immediately and within half of a day, you're removed. Or it's actually a weak disease and then you recover quickly in all the cases. So let us set TR to be 0 0.5. Now let us run the simulation again. So you can see this is, I mean, really crazy, like, just like almost nobody got infected. So uh, the single person that was infected just to remain in the population and then die or be removed or they get quarantined or recovered. So without actually infecting anyone. So now, even though uh, uh, the, the infection being really dangerous or the government being effective, and then removing the person within half a day is a really good thing. If people are really careless and they don't wash their hands when they interact with, I mean, with other people, they can actually like kind of make things worse. So let's see. So I'm going to let CR remain at 0 0.5 and then just take PR back to, I mean, 0 0.5 and let's see what the result is. So you can see the results. So now, because uh, people are actually not practicing personal hygiene, so even though people will get the disease, die or recover or get quarantined on time, because people are careless, a lot of people still get infected, but I mean, just over a longer period of time. So this is actually showing that uh, if the government is really responsive, quarantining people, they can actually, I mean, help a long way to I mean, uh, flatten the curve. So, and people being careless can actually worsen the situation. Then we can now, I mean, look at um, the last uh, part of the puzzle, which is um, the degree of social distancing. So, now, I set these values back to the initial value, and then I'm going to now increase the degree of social distancing. So let me see F is now equal to five. So let us see what that's, I mean, the impact that this has in simulation. So instead of the usual 50% that we've seen in previous, I mean, uh, scenario, here you can now see that only about 20% out of 5% of the population, I mean, get infected, I mean, at the maximum, I mean, rate of infection. Because, uh, at, because now we have increased the degree of social distancing. You're right. So it's just like just like increasing the repulsive uh, force strength that we, I mean, we have in the model.
So, and if we reduce that to let's say zero, um, you can see what the effect is. So, when f was one, the approximate, I mean, degree of infection is around 50%. So, if you just take it out entirely, people are not practicing social distancing. So, even though they still wash their hands and practice their personal hygiene, the uh, rate of infection goes as high as 60% at the maximum. And only 10% of the population were left uninfected. So, it's kind of approaching the maximum quicker because people are not practicing social distancing. So if you practice a lot of social distancing, you can reduce the number of people infected and it can also help to flatten the curve. So just for a recap, so we can change F back to five again and then see what that looks like. So the maximum number of infection goes down from 60% to just around 25 percent so as you increase from zero back to five so thank you for listening um, this file is a MATLAB file exchange and then you all can download and then run different scenario and try to um, understand how these factors affect the spread of disease thank you <laughs>